Hey, it's again. Today I'm going to show you how to shoot macro photography at a very low budget. Therefore, I'm going to use a flash diffuser which costs only one euro together with a very promising macro lens of Pergear which is 60mm f2.8 that only costs around $200. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the best out of the lens. I've catched a ton of sample footage and images to show you what is possible with such a cheap lens. And at the end of the video, we're going to do a side-to-side -side comparison to the Laura 60mm, which also supports 2-to-1 magnification, which looks quite similar but is double the price. So hopefully the low-budget version can compete with the Laura lens or maybe even beat them. But before we're going to take a look on the specs and at what aperture settings the lens got its strength, I'm going to show you what is possible using this lens. So I took a lot of footage, most of it handheld, at a very high magnification using natural light. And for the macro images, I've used this cheap DIY flash diffuser, which costs nothing but produces pretty good lighting. So grab a coffee, lean back, relax and enjoy the macros. When I reviewed the footage and the images, I was actually pretty surprised because I have used low budget macro lens, but this seems to be the first one which offers a pretty good sharpness for the price. This lens is designed for full frame camera bodies, but when you use it on a cheap APC camera, the equivalent focal length is 90 mm. This lens can capture macro photos up to a 2 to 1 magnification and is still able to focus to infinity. But the best thing actually really is the price, which makes it one of the cheapest 2 to 1 macro lens on the market. As you probably expected, this is a completely mechanical lens. This means there are no electronic contacts and no out of focus at all. It's a 100% manual lens. The size of the lens is actually pretty big and at around 600 gram, it is also pretty heavy. But for me, this is no problem. When I hold it in my hand, it really feels valuable. When I turn the focus ring, I hear a tiny metal grinding noise. This really does not affect the function of the lens, but I really feel I should mention it. Maybe wondering if you're able to use the lens for landscape, portrait or common photos. Yes, you can, but when you use it, for example, on a full frame sensor, you have a little bit of vignetting. When you shoot at a 2 to 1 magnification, the shooting distance between the front of the lens and the subject is around 5 cm or 2 inches, which is not too bad for a 2 to 1 macro lens. So this will give you enough space to illuminate the scene with natural light or when you use a flash diffuser, you won't have any shadows of the front of the lens on your image. We want to use this lens as a macro lens, so what are the best settings to use it at 1 to 1 or 2 to 1 magnification? 
at 1 to 1 the sharpness is at its highest when you stop down to f5.6. When you shoot at 2 to 1 magnification f4 offers the high sharpness and contrast but at a very short feet of depth. At a macro distance there is really not much vignetting visible. So this is really just an issue when you focus to infinity on a full frame sensor. Normally I do recommend my lower lens in my videos because they are pretty good for the money but I really could not find anything where the lower version would outperform the peer gear one. So if you're looking for a cheap 2 to 1 macro lens or you just started macro photography this is really a great lens. Of course I would not compare it to my Sony macro lens or the high end version of lower but as they are 5 times the price this is really not a topic for this low budget macro photography topic today. I hope you enjoyed the macro footage and if there are still any questions feel free to leave a comment below and I'm gonna help you with you deciding what macro lens might be the best for you. So thanks for watching, have a good day and hopefully see you on the next.